Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how firewalls work, and I'll also compare them with packet filters, that's your access control lists. So firewalls secure traffic passing through them by either permitting or denying it according to their rules. Stateful firewalls maintain a connection table which tracks the two-way state of traffic passing through the firewall. Return traffic is permitted by default. You'll see what that means coming up in a second. So an example of some firewall rules. In our example here, we've got a firewall. We've got our inside network with our hosts on the inside in the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network. And we've got the outside connected to the internet. And there's an internet web server there at 203.0.113.10. The way we have set up our firewall rules is to deny all traffic from the outside to the inside for security. And we're going to permit outbound web traffic from the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network. So we set up those rules on the firewall. Then our host on the inside, 10.10.10.10, sends out some web traffic to the external server at 203.0.113.10. Traffic is allowed because we have the rule to permit outbound web traffic from 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Then when that outbound traffic is sent out, it will be updated into the firewall's connection table. In the connection table, it will now say that a connection has been initiated from 10.10.10.10. And in our example, that host happens to be using the source port number 49160. And that's going out to 203.0.113.10 on destination port 80 for HTTP. Then the web server sends return traffic back to the host on the inside. The source and destination IP address and port numbers are going to be flipped around the other way now. So that traffic is going to come from a source IP address of 203.0.113.10 and a source port number of 80. And it's got a destination IP address of 10.10.10.10 and a destination port number of 49160. So that matches the connection that's in the connection table. The firewall sees that and it will permit that return traffic because it's valid return traffic for an existing connection in the connection table. That overrides the deny all traffic from outside to inside rule because it is legitimate return traffic. Now, in this next example, the host on the inside 10.10.10.10 has not initiated a connection out to the internet server on the outside. So in that case, the web server out on the internet tries to send traffic into 10.10.10.10. It does not match an existing connection the traffic is going to be coming from a source of 203.0.113.10 and port number 80 and a destination IP address of 10.10.10.10 and the destination port again for our example of 49160. That is now going to be dropped according to the deny all traffic from outside to inside rule and there is no existing connection in the connection table that would override that. Okay, so that's how firewalls work and how their rules work. Next generation firewalls are available. With a next generation firewall, that moves beyond port and protocol inspection at layers three and four and inspection and blocking to add application level inspection, intrusion prevention, and user-based security. So deep packet inspection analyzes packets up to layer seven of the OSI stack rather than it does with older traditional firewalls where they would look at the traffic up to layer four. Different permissions can also be applied to different users as well. So again, it goes beyond source and destination 
IP addresses and port numbers. It can look up to layer seven in the packets. It can also recognize different users as well. And that way you can apply different rules to different users based on their job roles. And the Cisco ASA with Firepower is a next generation firewall. It does support the deep packet analysis and it does also have IPS functionality. Okay, so that was firewalls. Next up, let's move on to comparing them with packet filters. And an access control list security policy is a packet filter. Packet filters, unlike stateful firewalls, do not maintain a connection table. So because of this, they affect traffic in one direction only. They do not track the state of two-way connections going through the router. If you have an access list applied on the way out only, the return traffic will be allowed because all traffic is allowed when an ACL is not applied. So if you just have an ACL applied in the outbound direction, you don't have an ACL applied in the inbound direction as well, but all traffic will be allowed inbound because there's not an ACL to control it. If you have ACLs applied in both directions, you will need explicit entries to allow both the outbound and the return traffic as well, because it does not keep track of the state. It's not going to recognize the incoming traffic, the traffic coming back as valid return traffic. So we'll do a similar example to what we had earlier with the firewall, but now we're doing it for an access control list. So here we've got an inbound ACL on the outside interface. So that's going to apply traffic coming in from the outside. And there, the same as we did with the firewall, we're going to deny all traffic. We also have an inbound ACL on the inside interface. So that's going to affect traffic coming from the inside going to the outside. And there we're going to permit web traffic from 10.10.10.0 slash 24. So the same as what we were doing with the firewall. Then a host on the inside, 10.10.10.10, sends outgoing web traffic to the external server on the internet at 203.0.113.10. We've got that inbound ACL on the inside interface, which permits web traffic from 10.10.10.0 slash 24. That does allow traffic to the web server, so the traffic will be allowed to pass through the router. The connection is not tracked in a connection table, though, like it would be in a stateful firewall. So then when the web server tries to send return traffic back in, that comes from 203.0.113.10, port 80, going to 10.10.10.10, .10 .10 .10, port 49160. That is going to be dropped because of the inbound ACL on the outside interface to deny all traffic. So you can see there the difference between a stateful firewall and a packet filter, a stateful firewall does track the state of connections and it allows valid return traffic. An ACL does not track the state of connections. So if you've got ACLs applied in both directions, you're going to need to have explicit rules to allow traffic going out and coming in as well. So to, return, to allow the return traffic in our example, you need to either remove the deny all traffic from outside to inside ACL on the outside interface, or add permit TCP any equals 80, 10.10.10.0, range 49152-65535. So with the first access control list entry there, what you'd be doing is just basically turning off security from the outside to the inside. Obviously, you don't want to do that. With the second example, you still have an ACL on the outside for traffic coming in. But what you're doing is you're saying if it's coming from a web server, then allow it to go to the inside host on the entire range of possible port numbers. So it's not tracking the state of connection. And this really is opening up a security hole in your network. So those two options, neither of them is a secure option for a router connected to the Internet. So because of that, we would always have a stateful firewall connected to the internet because we do want to have that higher level security and be able to track the state of the connections. Now, you might have heard of the established keyword before, and you might think this is a solution to the problem. So what we could do here is on our access list on the outside interface for traffic that is coming in, we could say add this rule, access list 100, permit TCP, any equals 80. So we're looking for any traffic that is coming inbound from a web server. 
that is going to 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 .10 order 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 255 when we say if it was established now intuitively this looks like it's making the axis control list on the router act in a stateful manner but it doesn't actually do what you think it does it doesn't mean track the state of the connection and if it was established from the inside going out allow the return traffic back in doesn't actually mean that the established keyword in an acl only checks for the ac flag in return traffic it the router does not keep a track of the state of the connections so if you do this it's not turning your acl into a stateful acl and it's actually easy for attackers to get around this just by setting the ac flag in their traffic so again it's still not as secure as a stateful firewall now it is possible to enable the firewall feature set on a router though if you do enable the ios firewall feature set that does turn it into a stateful firewall with the ios firewall feature set it uses different commands than you use in an acl Okay, so now you're maybe thinking, well, why do we even have access control lists then? Wouldn't we just use a firewall everywhere? Well, actually, you can use them to complement each other. So your ACL packet filters on your routers can add to an overall defense in-depth strategy. With your defense posture, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You don't want to just have a firewall and that's your entire security defense. You want to have defense in depth. So you've got a firewall there. If an attacker manages to get through the firewall, you've got other defense mechanisms beyond that as well to make it more difficult for them. Also, a firewall really guards against external threats. You need to guard against internal threats as well. So you don't just have a firewall. You also have additional security mechanisms in place. Standard practice is to use firewalls on major security boundaries, such as your internet edge, and augment this with internal ACLs. Purely external threats are primarily covered with strong firewall and IPS protection on the network perimeter, Sensitive hosts should also have firewall and IPS protection from internal hosts. So let's have a look at an example network topology again. This is the exact same topology as we had in the last lecture. So we've got our internet edge here. We've got a firewall on the perimeter between our internal network and outside to the internet. And we've got our servers in a DMZ. We have traffic going to our internal servers here both from our internal hosts and out from the internet as well. We've also got an IPS there to give it an additional level of security. Now, the difference we're gonna do here is that on the inside, we've got two different departments there. We've got department A and department B. And for this example, I'll say that department A and department B hosts should never actually be communicating with each other. Well, I can't enforce that on the firewall here because department A and department B are connected to a layer three switch on the inside. So traffic between the two departments would just go via the switch. It never touches the firewall. So in this situation, how can I secure traffic between the two different departments? Well, I could put another firewall in, but that would add to the expense and also to the complexity as well. A much easier option and what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure an ACL on my layer three switch here to prevent traffic between those two internal departments. So they can, both departments can get out to the internet. They can also get to the internal servers, but they're not allowed to communicate with each other. Okay, so that was how stateful firewalls work. Also a comparison with packet filters, our ACLs, and how you can use them in combination with each other. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.